So unless you've been living under a cube-shaped rock, you probably know that Steve from Minecraft is the newest DLC fighter in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Steve's always been a character that's frequently talked about in the world of Smash speculation, and before his reveal, the idea of his inclusion was a pretty divisive one. Many people would claim that his visual style would be out of place in Smash, or that his rigid design makes him unfit for the type of animation that a Smash character typically demands. Others would assert that if his design were to be given an upgrade to push its fidelity or to give it more range for animation, then it would be inauthentic. Of course, we now know that Sakurai and his team chose to keep Steve's visual style and animations extremely faithful to the original game. And while this is initially jarring and maybe leaves something to be desired from the official render, it was a choice made with good reason. So let's talk about some of those reasons. First of all, it's a very faithful representation of the original game. The stiff movements of Steve's attacks evoke a sort of awkward energy that's honestly very iconic, and for people who play Minecraft it feels very familiar. Now does it look good? Well, that's for you to decide on your own. But the primitive style also makes for a nice striking contrast. Just like with Mr. Game & Watch, Steve sticks out like a sore thumb and it gives the character a unique sort of charm. But most importantly, it keeps all of the Minecraft representation in Smash feeling cohesive. Minecraft world, like Steve, is very authentic to the original game, and if Steve were to have a significant visual upgrade, it might feel mismatched when compared to his stage or even his own props. Of course, they could have given Steve a visual upgrade and then just given his props and his stage the same kind of upgrade, but we might lose the unique charm of the original style. And plus, it'd also be far more demanding of a design challenge for the developers. And sure, other characters do look out of place in their own stages, like Pac-Man does in Pac-Land or Duck Hunt in Duck Hunt. But at the end of the day, it's really just about trade-offs. Steve and his stage in Smash were probably very easy to model and animate, which allowed the devs to focus instead on Steve's unique programming challenges. And like Sakurai said, there were a lot of things that had to happen with the infrastructure of the stages to make Steve even viable as a character in the game. So there's three pretty good reasons to keep Steve looking exactly like he does in Minecraft. But on the other hand, part of the Smash Bros experience is seeing how the devs reimagine our favorite characters in the style of each game. Characters like Mario, Toon Link, Rob, really the majority of the cast get to see a visual overhaul that brings the cartoonier characters up to the same standard as the more realistic ones. In fact, the very channel that you're watching right now made its mark by imitating that tradition. So the choice to keep Steve and Smash looking like a straight up copy of the original does have its benefits, but unfortunately it leaves us to only imagine what kind of overhaul he could have received. Now, before Steve was revealed, I had expressed on many occasions that a visual upgrade to Steve could be tastefully executed, but it's one thing to make that claim, it's another thing entirely to substantiate it. So, when Steve was finally revealed to look the way he does, I remarked about how I was expecting at least a little bit of a visual upgrade. He just looks like that! He just looks like that! And that was met with a variety of responses. Some people disagreed with the notion that a visual upgrade could even look good. Others asked if I could sort of explain what kind of upgrades I had in mind, but Based on a lot of the responses that I got, it's very apparent that when different people hear phrases like design overhaul or visual upgrade, or even hear me specify the things that I would like to see, it can be interpreted a lot of different ways. So let me first list some of the things that I'm definitely not describing. I wouldn't want to see Steve with elbows or knees, or have 3D facial features that break the pixel grid of the textures like Minecraft story mode or a lot of fan animations. And I'm also not suggesting excessive use of normal maps or high resolution textures with a lot of detail. Basically, it's not about throwing as much graphical technology at the problem as possible, but rather it's about restraint and subtlety. But I think we've talked about it enough. Let's take a look at what I came up with. So what you're looking at is the culmination of a few specific ideas that were informed by a set of guiding principles. I wanted to keep the pixelated look of the textures intact, which means that the diffuse texture is going to be largely unchanged, and that leaves other material characteristics to do the heavy lifting. The first thing I wanted to do was try using some subtle normal maps or even some extrusions of the geometry 
to represent the different layers of material. And it was important for these details, like the normal maps or extrusions, to be aligned with the pixel grid of the textures. So I made sure that the topology of the model was actually subdivided in a way that each edge loop lines up with the pixel grid. Now these subtle extrusions or normal maps really come into play in areas of transition, like the transition from the hair to the face, or the sleeves to the arms, and these also should be represented in the game model either as a normal map or actual geometry. I also wanted to give all of the edges a very slight bevel. Without a beveled edge, any sort of cube or cuboid looks pretty boring, but just giving it that slight bevel allows light to catch the edge in a more interesting way, and that can create highlights or darker edges at specific angles of light. Another thing I wanted to experiment with was slight changes in the roughness to augment the different shades of color in the original pixelated textures. At a glance, these textures don't look too different, but when the light hits the model at a specific angle, you can see how certain pixels reflect light with more specularity than other parts of the texture. There's also some subtle ambient occlusion baked into the diffuse texture to emphasize some of the layer transitions that I talked about earlier. A lot of these ideas were actually inspired by physical toys of Steve that I saw when I was doing some research for a Smashified episode that we started working on a long time ago, but never actually completed. There's just something about the materials and the physicality of the toys that reminds me of the style of Smash Ultimate, so I thought, you know, it could be a pretty good influence. Beyond just the visual design, I also had ideas for how the animation could be given a little bit more juice. Now, I do love the awkwardness of the original game's animation, but I wanted to see if I could employ some of the principles of animation like squash and stretch and allow for some secondary animation while keeping the rigidity of the limbs mostly intact. Just like with the visual characteristics, physical toys also inspired this particular idea for animation, and the idea was to give the animation more believable physicality by allowing the stiff limbs to flex ever so slightly, as if they're made of something like vinyl or plastic. The flexibility would only come into play on faster motions, so perceptually, the limbs should still feel pretty solid. It's also very important to keep any motions very simple, but to give them weight by allowing the limbs to take a little time to settle into the key poses. For instance, if the arm were to do a chopping motion, as it settles into the key pose, it kind of dips down and then back up and then down a little bit, just to give it a little bit more weight. Any expressions or movement happening with the face would have to stay aligned to the pixel grid without any interpolation. Now, I did create a rig that controls the eye's movement from side to side as well as the blink, but all of the animations are keyframed in such a way that those changes happen in a single frame. Now, this is just one way that Nintendo could have made Steve feel a little bit more special in Smash, but it is also important for me to emphasize that I am not in any way suggesting that this is what Steve should have looked like. Really, this project was just a way for me to explore some of what could have been if those trade-offs weren't a factor. I also want to point out that I've never actually played Minecraft myself, so I'm not really part of the Minecraft community. Minecraft does have a very vibrant art and animation scene, and I don't want to put anyone down by sort of rejecting some of the common traits of a lot of fan animations, which I chose not to use here. While I have done a fair bit of research into a lot of fan creations, any design choices I make will always be influenced by my own personal taste, as well as my perception of what characterizes the core essentials of the art styles of both Smash and Minecraft. So just keep that in mind. Maybe you agree with some of the decisions I made here, maybe you don't, maybe you prefer what they did in Smash. That's totally fine. And I'd love to hear any of your thoughts in the comments, so feel free to, you know, let us know what you think. So that's it for this video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a really long time since we've posted anything here on the channel, but we do plan on posting a few more things before the end of the year, so stay tuned for that. And as always, a really big thank you to our patrons over on Patreon. Because our channel is a lot less active than it used to be, we've really scaled back our Patreon page to be more or less a tip jar, so there's absolutely no pressure for anybody to become a patron, but if you just want to support us in a small way, it's always appreciated. There's some really big projects that we have in the works. We still have Snowboard Kids, we still have Bomberman. A lot of things are happening behind the scenes that we can't show you guys yet. So we appreciate what you guys do for us. Of course, hit that subscribe button if you want to see what kind of stuff we're up to. Hit the like button, hit the bell so that you don't miss the uh, very occasional uploads that we do. And that's it. So again, thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.